Hello everybody, my name is Michael from Polygon Island and today I'm going to be redoing a video that I posted over a year ago now I think um, and it's creating textures and using them in Blender with Quixel Mixer so um, that video that I did last year is I think my most viewed video on this channel um, I think it has like 13,000 views I'm not sure it has it has a lot it got a lot of attention but a lot of stuff in that video um, I did wrong or I didn't do in a way that I would now and that's just because when I made that video I didn't really know a lot about a lot of stuff but now I do so I can remake this video and have a lot more um, information for you guys and to do it a lot easier so uh, Quixel Mixer is still in beta, which means it's still completely free. You can go to the website and download it. I'll leave the link in the description below. Uh, once you download it, you can install it. You'll have to restart your computer. And once you do that, you can get in. You can sign in with your Quixel Mixer account. If you don't have a Quixel Mixer account, you can make one. It's completely free. You don't have to do anything. Just make an account, and then you'll be good. So once you do all that, it'll go through this little thing where it has to like, load textures and stuff, and then you'll come to the screen so there's some sample mixes in here but we're not going to do that right now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new mix uh, we can name it whatever we want I'm just going to name it ground because that's what I'm going to do working resolution you can keep this or uh, change it if you want a higher resolution resolution texture but 2048 pixels should be good enough so if we click OK it'll bring us to this okay so what this is is your your base. This is your base. This is where all your textures will be applied on. This is where you put your textures. So basically, if we go to our local library, you can see that we have a lot of like stuff. Um, you can uh, you can pretty much do grab whatever you want. Um, so like let's say I want ground. Okay, uh, I'm going to get this force roots, and it'll load that in. And then once it does that, you'll be able to see that it is there. So if we delete this base layer by just right-clicking on it, or you should be able to right-clicking on it. I, don't, I guess not. Uh, let's just hide that for now. But you can see that we have this forest roots material. Um, and you could pretty much just do this and export this as material. But you also have uh, some different stuff up here so a surface layer is just your textures um, a decal layer is like any kind of like decals any like trash leaves uh, just anything that's not an actual like 3d object like just think of them as stickers like stickers that you put on your texture um, just think of them as stickers and basically what you can do that is just apply them to your texture and it gives it a lot more detail uh, then we have a solid layer, which is just a solid color. Um, I'm going to delete that. And then we have a liquid layer, which adds water, which is really, really, really useful, actually. So we can adjust this, kind of bring it up a little bit. Not too much, though. And then you can change your surface to whatever you want. Depth to whatever you want. Uh, you have a noise layer, which gives the... Um, gives the texture uh, kind of like displacement and you can change a bunch of stuff with that too uh, so you can just change stuff like that uh, you can also change the lighting so if you want different lightings you can see that it's reflecting off the water uh, you have all these lighting settings uh, to like preview I'm gonna go street lights because it's kind of like an outside setting and this is an outside texture so I'm gonna go with that right now um, and then a paint layer is where you can just paint different like shapes and stuff masking stuff like that so I'm going to delete that what you can also do uh, in this program is one you can add different textures with a Quixel subscription um, but you, if you don't have a Quixel subscription there's another site that I get all my textures from normally it's cc0textures.com all textures on there are completely free to use for whatever you want they're licensed in CCO which is Creative Commons which means that you can use whatever you want on that site for whatever you want so it's a really cool site um, I've downloaded a texture from there but what you can do is if you go up here to library you can import custom surface 
and then if you click over here and click diffuse it make sure auto populate is checked and just go to wherever you saved that uh, go to wherever you save that file and diffuse is going to be either labeled as color or albedo or something like that it's going to be your base like color texture so if you click that we should see that once it loads it'll load them all in uh, make sure all these are right because sometimes the normal and roughness gets flipped around but um, yeah all these are right so if we click next we can change the height to one and then area just one and then my surface just name it ground I guess um, and then if we click select category um, choose ground and then we click import and it will import the texture into mixer so if we have that we can then go and add surface layer and then we will see our ground right here so if we click this and it will load it in we can see that uh, my texture is in here as well so yeah um, this texture isn't very good to mix with this texture so I'm gonna delete this uh, delete this layer I'm gonna add another one or not a noise I'm going to add another one and then I might mix it uh, so I'm gonna mix it with this um, this is a mud texture that was in there as well uh, I can decrease the threshold and then the radius to kind of kind of like smooth it in a little bit I guess increase the radius a little bit and then we have this which is kind of a muddy uh, forest texture so now once we have this what we can do is we can go to file and then quick export Oops. If we go over here to export right here export location and then we can just browse to a folder uh, I'm just gonna go desktop and then ground and select that folder and then what we can do now is change the export format you can pick any of these I recommend PNG though uh, make sure all these are selected so they uh, except for the ones you don't have all these should be selected automatically and then once we have that we can go to file quick export and it'll export all your maps depending on how re high resolution texture that might take a little bit longer but now that we have our texture what we can do is we can actually import this into blender and use it just like any other texture and so the way we're going to do that is if we go into blender um, we just have our default cube delete it and we add a plane scale up the plane and then we go we split the window by just going over here until we cr your pointer turns into a little plus and just split the window then go over here and then click shader editor and if you hit end it just closes the toolbar now if we click new we can see that we have a principal BSDF in here and what we can actually do is we can get control actually before you do this make sure you have the node wrangler add-on uh, enabled so the way you do that just I did that too fast go to edit preferences add-ons and just type in node and make sure node wrangler is selected and then save preferences so now what we can do is we can make sure the principal BSDF is the only one selected click control shift and T on your keyboard and it'll bring up this and you can see this principal texture setup right here. This will bring in all your um, PVR textures into one. So if we go into desktop and then go to ground where mine was, and then go here, and we can select all these, and then principal texture setup, we can see that our all of our textures are mapped, and we didn't have to do anything. So now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my render engine to cycles and change it to GPU. And then if we go into render view, we should see that our texture is here. Now, there's not really displacement. We can see that there's not really displacement in this. Uh, I just switch over to EV because Cycles decided my GPU wasn't good enough for this. Um, you can see there's not really displacement, even though we have a displacement map here. So what we can do to fix that is we can just delete this displacement altogether because it's not really doing anything and what we can do is we can click our plane make sure our plane selected hit tab and then right click and at the very top it says subdivide click subdivide and go down here to this little, this little button and then change the subdivisions to like 75 or actually no not 75 maybe like 100 and then if we 
go over here to our modifiers. We can add a modifier. We can add a displacement modifier. Click this little new button right here, and then click this little like two beam looking things right here, and then we can type. Um, we don't really need to do that because it's not a new procedural texture. But if we go on here to image, we can click open, and then we can go back to where our texture was saved, and then open our displacement texture. So you can see right now it's way too intense. So what we can do to fix that is if we go over here, we can change our strength to like 0.1, and then we can see uh, that still might be a little bit too intense. Yeah, that looks good. So we can see that this uh, is now actually displacing our plane. Um, and I'm actually going to add another subdivision to just clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to right click and click Shade Smooth. So uh, we can apply that modifier too. And so now we can see that it's actually displaced. And if we go into rendered, we can see that it's actual, like the texture is actually like displaced. So that's pretty much it. The water has the right like roughness and stuff. You can see it's reflecting light and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, Hopefully I explained some things better than I did in the last tutorial. Hopefully I made it a little bit easier. But thanks guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm Michael from Polygon Island. Make sure to follow my Instagram in the description below. Uh, I post all my art on there. And I'm trying to get more followers on it. So if you guys want to do that, it'll be in the link. To, to, it, it, it'll be in the link in the description. So thanks guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.